Have you ever worked on something and felt stuck? Like writing your thesis or a book or just solving a problem? Have you struggled finishing it or maybe even struggled to start? In that case, you might benefit from this motivational tool called the Grand Gesture. This term was coined by Carl Newport in his book Deep Work. In short, the idea of the grand gesture is to get an extra dose of energy and motivation to get something done by making a big change to your normal environment, for example, the location where you work or the tools that you work with. Here are some examples. In 2007, J.K. Rowling was struggling to complete The Deathly Hallows, the final book in the Harry Potter series. The pressure was enormous as millions of fans were waiting for it. She needed high concentration to work on it, which she found difficult to achieve at home. The kids were there and the dogs were barking, so she decided to do something extreme to shift her mindset. She checked herself into a suite at the 5-star Balmoral Hotel and wrote there. It went so well that she ended up writing the whole book there. Another example is Bill Gates. During his time as Microsoft CEO, he would take Think Weeks. He would retreat to a cabin with a stack of papers and books to think deeply about the big issues of the company. A more extreme example is the story of Peter Shankman, an entrepreneur and social media pioneer. In a blog post, he explained his realization that traveling on international flights gave him the focus he needed to write, as nothing would distract him there. Sometime after that, he signed a book contract that only gave him two weeks to finish the whole manuscript. He needed incredible concentration to be able to finish on time, so he did something unusual. He booked a round-trip business class ticket to Tokyo for $5,000. When the plane took off, I took out my laptop and in the 14 hours it took us to get from Newark to Tokyo, I wrote chapters 1 to 5. We landed in Tokyo, I went through immigration, walked outside, took a deep breath of fresh air, turned right around, went back through security, back to the gate and boarded the same plane back from Tokyo to Newark. I even sat in the same seat. On the 12-hour flight home, I wrote chapters 6 to 10. I landed 31 hours after I took off with a completed book and my second bestseller. Okay, so now you might think, this sounds all great, but I don't have that kind of budget to spend on luxurious trips just to write my thesis or write my novel or solve the problem of my career stagnation. And you might even have the objection that this kind of method is only for weak people, for those kind of people who can't muster the discipline to get things done without resorting to these kind of extraordinary measures. But before we rush to a conclusion, let's dissect this tool and look at the logic behind it. The concept of the grand gesture is that by leveraging a radical change to your normal environment, coupled perhaps with a significant investment of effort or money, all dedicated towards supporting a deep work task. You increase the perceived importance of that task. This boost of importance reduces your mind's instinct to procrastinate and delivers an injection of motivation and energy. Let's break this down. You make a radical change, not just a minor change. Bill Gates could have just worked in his office in Microsoft Seattle headquarters. But in order to get the levels of concentration that he needed, he made a dramatic change to his environment by going for a week-long retreat in his cabin. And the same goes for J.K. Rowling. She could have just written her book at home amongst the noisy kids and the daily routine. But faced with such huge task and time pressure, it was easier for her to do it in that very luxurious hotel, which was located near a castle which inspired her. She paid $1,000 per night a sum that is too large even for her to ignore and not make it worth the money. You could imagine that when you pay $1,000 per night specifically to complete a task, you automatically perceive the task to be super important. You feel more motivated to see fast returns here in form of a finished book. Peter Shankman made a significant investment of $5,000 to put himself on a plane where he was undistracted to write his manuscript. I don't know how much he makes, but $5,000 is likely to be a relatively big amount for anyone to just rent an environment for writing. The fact that his investment was significant put his task, which was to write the manuscript, on a higher level of priority. In addition to that, the time that he had on the plane was limited, so the concrete time pressure helped him to speed up the process. Now I want to address two of the possible objections that you might have. The first one is, what about people with a normal budget? So how would this be applicable to someone with, let's say, an income of 30 to 70K? It's quite likely that you and I don't have that kind of budget to spend thousands of dollars on a plane ticket or a hotel stay just to get a task done, no matter how important. And luckily, we don't have to. 
Here's my take on it. It's not about the five-star hotel or the thousand-dollar budget. The concept of the grand gesture is that the change you make or investment in effort or time you make is significant relatively to you. The key is relative. I normally write in two-dollar notebooks, so if I go out and buy a Moleskine notebook, then that represents a significant investment to me. For J.K. Rowling or Shankman, a $1,000 per night hotel stay or $5,000 flight might be within their budget, but it's still likely to be above what they would normally be willing to spend for the purpose of just completing their work. The key of the grand gesture in my mind is that the investment that you make is just the right amount that signals to your mind that this is something significant. This is something that deserves extra attention and is high on your priority list. Let's say that you've been working on your thesis for a few weeks and normally you would work at home or at the library around the corner. And after some time in the process, you just can't concentrate anymore and feel stuck. Instead of continuing your routine, you can break it and mix it up a bit. For example, work at a fancy cafe an hour away from where you live on three days of the week. Or let's say you usually scribble your story ideas on a cheap notebook or on Word on your computer like I do, and then you feel drained and uninspired. Then try investing in some tools, for example, a set of high quality notebooks. If you normally write on a $2 notebook, then writing in a $15 notebook might be able to infuse you with a new sense of importance about the task. And here, it's not just about the fact that the notebooks are branded or that the cafe is an hour away. The point is that you've made a significant investment. You took one precious hour of your time to get to that cafe to buy a $6 cappuccino. Or you spend those $15 on a notebook which you would normally never do. By making this unusual expenditure, you sacrifice something that is of value to you. Your time, your money, all dedicated towards supporting your task. It is likely that then you wouldn't want this to go to waste. You might be less likely to procrastinate the task further. Instead, you might feel more motivated to turn this investment into an immediate output, like a completed task. The second objection might be, isn't this only for weak people? People who can't muster the discipline to get things done without resorting to this method? We saw just now that famous successful people apply this concept. And for ages, a lot of people have consciously or unconsciously applied this concept successfully in a lot of different ways. I think that it's for people who are conscious enough and are willing to work with their quirks and idiosyncrasies. I I used to have this mindset that if I want to write something creative or I want to complete a task, if I have enough motivation and willpower, I don't need a special notebook or special tools. I can just write on a piece of blank or scrap paper. Why should I spend the extra money? And then I went out to buy Moleskine notebooks. Yes, that was me. Moleskine? Moleskine, Moleskine, Moleskine. Moleskin. <laughs> I just found out today that the right way to read it is Moleskin and not Moleskin. Anyway, it was a significant investment for me. It was damn expensive. Somehow I put more significance toward the thing that I wanted to achieve and it worked for my purpose and that specific project at the time. Some part of me said, hmm, that's so petty. You couldn't just write on a piece of paper or Word document. You had to go out and spend $25 on a bunch of notebooks. That's how I used to think, but that kind of thinking is very limiting. Thinking that tools, environment, and surrounding don't matter, that the only thing that matters is our mind is all nice and fine, but it's assuming that humans are totally rational beings. We'd all like to think that we are these rational beings, but the fact is that humans do not think and act rational all of the time. In in fact, humans are irrational frequently, but that is what makes us humans and not machines. In making progress, we need to work with our idiosyncrasies. It's not about having to book a thousand dollar hotel or buy branded notebooks. It's about asking yourself what kind of investment or effort will you put in that signals to your mind, hey, this is something really important, something that has priority now. And what works for me may not work for you, and what works for you may not work for someone else. Especially when it comes to creative works, people have their own quirks, and sometimes you have to cater to them. Here's an important note about the grand gesture. It's not a solution to every challenge, and you shouldn't be applying it in a way that jeopardizes your finances or disrupts your life negatively in any way. 
For me, the grand gesture is like a booster, like the extra boost of motivation and energy that an athlete needs to finish his race. I hope this video was useful to you. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Please also share with me if you had any experience in applying the grand gesture. Check out my channel for other videos on career and motivation. Like this video if you liked it and share it with your friends. Please don't forget to subscribe and also hit the little notification bell so that YouTube will notify you if there are new videos for me. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to catch you again soon.